I'm your host, Mort Cooper. If you heard somebody do that, you wouldn't have any doubts about their speech problem. If I say I'm Mort Cooper, you're tuned to a program called Change Your Voice, Change Your Life, you would listen because the sound is reasonable. But if, if, if I do that, you turn away and you don't know what to do with people who stutter. Those are the overt or open stutters, people who have gotten to the point where they are so fearful of communicating and speaking, they have set up a set of rules within themselves that create the very problem that is called stuttering. That's my premise. I've been in my field for approximately 30 years. A number of years ago at Stanford University, in 1957, I was privileged to work with the adult stutterers there under the direction of Dr. Virgil Anderson. And we had tremendous success, outstanding success, working with stutterers, adult stutterers. Over the years, I've been privileged to work with a number of stutterers and help them to regain their normal speech. Can you regain your normal speaking pattern if you do that? Does it bother you when I... If it doesn't bother you, then nothing will. We live in a society that says to us, you must be reasonable in speech. The stutterer lives in a society that he believes or she believes says that you must be perfect in speech. The normal person has a number of hesitations. They, they do that. They do that. They, they do that. They prolongate words. They repeat, write. They pause. They have what I call vocal pauses. They ah, uh, ah. Uh, but they don't force these disfluencies. We call them disfluencies in our field of speech therapy or speech pathology. I've called them bobbles. The bobbling of America is basically where normal people are. Normal people, that's the kind of people that you and I are when we speak. We're not perfect. The interesting aspect is that those who stutter believe the normal people are perfect in speech. Did you know that? In fact, if you ask the stutterer, what is normal speech? The stutterer will tell you, and that's what they've told me for 30 years, that normal speech is perfect. It just flows, it's smooth, it doesn't have any bobbles, any hesitations, prolongations, repetitions, any, any vocal size, any, any, do you hear what I'm doing? We all have those bobbles, but the stutterer believes that we don't. What is stuttering about? Stuttering is about growing up, in a sense, absurd. There was a book by Goodman some years ago, Growing Up Absurd. It depicts the lifestyle of New York City, going to school, and what going to school in the city of New York or growing up in New York is. And I can't really argue with Paul Goodman about growing up absurd. I, I live that kind of life. It's not so funny when you're living it. It's funny when you when you read about it, because it reminds you of what you went through. Stutterers go through a lot, and it's not very funny to them when they go like that. Those are the overt, open stutterers, and they can't hide. So they try to do a lot of things to avoid what they're doing. They take their tongue and preform it. They take their tongue and preform it. Try this for size. Put your tongue behind the upper teeth. Put your tongue behind the upper teeth. Keep it there and count one to ten. Can you count one to ten keeping your tongue at your upper teeth? Try it. Can't do it. Now, if stuttering is about preforming, 
the word is pre-forming, they form the tongue at the place they believe the sound, whatever sound is, should be coming out. They anticipate 10 seconds, 15 seconds, a second before, whatever it is, fearful that the sound will not come out right, so they preform the tongue, making it be where physiologically they think it should be. And in that process, they create a problem. Stuttering is self-induced. It's self-created. If it's self-created, why do people do it? We do a lot of things in our life because we don't know better. Albert Einstein said the solution to our problems are simple, only we complicate. And when we simplify, we talk with God because God made it all simple, whatever God's may be. The solution to stuttering, as I have found it over the years, is relatively simple. You must change the image pattern of the individual. The image pattern. The stutter attempts to be perfect. The stutter refuses to have baubles because baubles are not normal. So they have a misconception and a mythology of what is normal. From early childhood, they live with this misconception from the ages of three, four, five, six, seven, when stuttering basically begins. Because at that time, they feel internally through their own concepts or from concepts given to them by family, friends, and others, or by stress, tension, whatever, that the speech pattern should be perfect. Now, when, when we grow up, we, we do that between the ages of three, four, five, six, seven, we have 45 of those baubles per thousand words. We all have it basically, some more, some less. But the stutterer attempts to avoid them. And trying to avoid the baubles is like trying to avoid reality. It doesn't work. What happens when the individual tries to avoid the baubles? They hear themselves as bobbling. They, they hear that. And they want to take it out of their speech. They do it. People tell them to do that. Recently, I had a young man on the program who was a stutterer f until he was 22 years of age. And his father tried to get him to remove the baubles when he was five years of age. At 22 years of age, he was a severe stutterer. And I had the privilege at that time to work with him for about six months. He recovered his normal speech pattern. He had to change his image and conception of what is normal. Today, ten years later, he talks with a normal pattern. Because he bobbles like the rest of us. Do you bobble like the rest of us? And if you don't, how do you get by? If you stutter, do you think it's forever? Have you tried intricate, involved, complicated therapies? Let me suggest a very simple solution. The tongue has to move very spontaneously. It cannot be held back. So when we count one to ten, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, if you stutter, you know where your tongue is. You ask the stutterer, where is his tongue, when he or she is counting one to ten. They basically will tell you because they are experts at where the tongue should be. They live with expectations, they live with anticipation, they live with doubts and anxieties, and that's no way to speak because to speak normally you have to speak spontaneously. And if you don't speak spontaneously, you upset the entire rhythm of nature and the entire rhythm of speech. It won't work. If you anticipate what you're going to say in sound, it's not going to work. You can anticipate in thought, but not sound. Because if you preform your tongue, you're in deep trouble. There are two types of stutters, basically. The open stutter, the overt, and the other type, which I call the covert. Covert stuttering. That's the, what we call in our field, interiorized stuttering. People who stutter internally, but you and I wouldn't notice it, but they know they stutter. And that kind of stuttering is real. They actually do stutter, but they're hiding behind words. They literally are. They don't use certain words, certain sounds. They say what they don't mean by accident because they're afraid to say certain sounds they can't say. So they are secretly stuttering within. 
If you do that, you may get by for a period of years, but it's an awful kind of hell to pay to be speaking with people. It's very difficult on the mind and on the body and on the ease and flexibility of the soul. People who stutter insist that all too often they're born with that affliction. They were programmed for it. I don't believe that. The problem of stuttering is what we do to ourselves through anticipation, through all kinds of expectations of what is beyond our reach. There are no perfect speakers that you must know. Nobody is perfect. If they are perfect, they are perfect for a minute or five minutes or ten minutes. They have a time and a place, but perfection does not last. Human beings do not speak perfectly. Robots may, machines may, but human beings do not. And for the stutterer to anticipate that speech is perfect sets up the fall immediately. People who stutter have told me over the years they modeled their speech pattern on an anchorman, a certain type of speech pattern, fast, this, that, whatever it was, deliberate, and they try to sound like that person or personalities. In doing so, they try to be somebody they weren't. The problem with the stutter is that he and she does not utilize the speech pattern that they can use. They try to be too fast or too slow, to this or to that. They are not themselves. It is the same with people in the area of voice. We so seldom use our normal voice, the real star quality voice that we have, because we don't know how to do it. We never take lesson one. Stutterers in our society, all too often at all, they have a neurological problem. It's a physiological problem. It's blood, it's genes, it's a factor X. I don't buy it. I don't believe it. As I said, I've been in my field for 30 years. I've seen individuals recover. I've been privileged to work with them. If they had a neurological or physiological problem, they could not overcome the problem by changing their misconceptions and overcoming their myths. What are their myths? Are there additional myths? Yes, the additional myths are that there's some kind of factor X that makes them different than you and me, that they simply were born to that kind of thing. It's like ability. You have certain abilities and in time those abilities come out. I'm saying something else. I'm saying that stuttering is not like the ability. Speech is normal for all of us. Normal for all of us. And basically we mess it up by trying to be perfect. Can we do it? Can we become stutterers in adult in adulthood? Yes, we can. We can become stutterers if we start believing that we have to be perfect. There are cases now and then where individuals begin to stutter in adulthood because they try to be what they are and then preform the tongue. It's not too often, but it does happen. As I said, the vast majority of people who stutter, stutter between the ages, begin it, between the ages of three and seven. Why? That's the time we learn to use the motor pattern, the speech pattern. We become who we are at that time. And who are we? We learn to play with sound. We babble. We have echolalia. We have repetitions and hesitations. We are not perfect. If the family, the mother or the father or the, the siblings or relatives say, you shouldn't do that, you, should, you, should, you shouldn't do that, they use the hesitations, prolongations and repetition themselves, I've heard them, and they're telling others, children, not to do it, because they don't hear themselves. If we heard ourselves played back on a tape machine as we speak, you and I, we would find that we have a lot of disfluency. Those are baubles. Disfluency is the word we use in the field of speech pathology to say that we are imperfect. And if you tape yourself and played yourself back, you would hear yourself with a number of hesitations, prolongations, repetitions, vocal size, and many other imperfections. 
You know what I mean? You know, and I mean. Throughout the day, people say, you know what? I, I mean, you know what I mean. You, 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 know? you know? Those are normal people who simply have an inarticulate style. They're not too expressive. And it's much easier to get by saying, you know, and I mean. If you know what they mean, you can identify with them. I all too often don't know what somebody means when they say, you know what I mean. If I knew, they wouldn't have to say, you know what I mean. They would have to tell me. I'm into language and speech, and I like to hear people explain what they have in mind. Misunderstandings in life come from not really understanding what the other person says. We thought we did. You know what I mean? But you have to be aware that we are so filled with hesitations and prolongations and repetitions. Stutterers look to the politicians and say, listen to how gifted they are, how fluid and fluent and easy they are in their speech pattern. They look to the talk show hosts and radio announcers and other people, and they fail to realize that these are speakers who have been working at speaking for years and years and years and have learned, learned, to take the hesitations and prolongations and repetitions out of their speech pattern. You can do that as you grow older, but you first have to learn to bobble and be normal as you're growing up. There are ages and stages in life. Between the ages of three and seven, taking the bobbles out is possibly the worst thing you can do if you want to grow up normal. People who don't grow up normal have removed those bobbles, tried to be perfect, and in adulthood, if you watch the lips, they're preforming the lips. The tongue, it, you see that. Now, if you're telling me it doesn't bother you, you're a better man than I am, or a better woman, Gunga Din. But for me, it's bothersome, and it doesn't have to be. Stutterers stop the breathing pattern. They have no air, and they're still going. We cannot talk without air. We can't drive a car without gas that I know of. I'm sure in time we will find other ingredients to drive the car, other fuel. But at the present point, we use gas, all of us. Or the vast majority, some of us are a little unique and we have some other means. You cannot talk without air. The stutterer attempts to do that. And it's very difficult to do. They run out of air and they continue to... So you're seeing the fear the anxiety, the terror in the individual trying to be perfect. Are you perfect? If you are, you're unique. And if you are unique, you can be in the Guinness Handbook. But there are no perfect speakers. Only stutters are perfect. We're trying to be. And the fallout is pretty obvious as to what's happening. Why don't stutterers learn to be more like the rest of us? Why? They don't know better. And when they're told, they think it's just another daydream. You mean I, I, I should go like that? I, sh I should repeat myself? I, sh I, I should uh, hesitate? They are fearful of what people will say about their speech pattern. In fact, they're so fearful that it takes a fair amount of time to get them to tune in to what normal people do. That's what I get them to do. I have them listen to talk show hosts with invited guests who speak spontaneously. When people speak spontaneously, they are such bobblers you cannot believe. And that's the way it is. We are all bobblers. So I have the individuals whom I work with who stutter. I have them tune into the spontaneous conversations. And they come back saying, that everybody stutters. Everybody stutters because they hear one after the other using those hesitations, prolongations, and repetitions. The point I make is that that is not stuttering. That is normal speech. That the radio show host, the talk show host, and others are much more gifted and they know how to use their speech pattern without those hesitations for the most part, but they have them too. So if you want to be perfect, and you don't stutter, you're unique. Because I have found only stutters are perfect or trying to be perfect, and they stutter badly. 
That's the answer. Should it be that you don't try to be perfect? I think you can try. But you have to know the basics of speech. And the individuals who stutter don't. Those who are secret stuttering people have a containment of their pace and their pattern so that they sound normal to our ear. But if you talk with them and they open up, they will tell you that they measure every word, every thought, and that it's a hell in life. Is that any way to live in a society given to speech? You have to speak all the time. You have to be heard. You have to be liked. You have to be listened to if you're going to get anywhere. And they are always measuring what they have to say. They don't have any, any ease, any flow. Have you ever wandered into somebody, their speech pattern doing that? I think you now and then may think about it as you reflect back and say, yes, I think I, I may have seen that, but I didn't know what it was. These people are as bad off, if not worse, as those who are overt stutterers. The overt, they're trying very hard. I think they have a better chance of changing what they have than those who do it covertly because the coverts are getting away with it. That's my experience. And they're much harder to work with because they have the changing sounds and words and thoughts within themselves. And they've managed to get by and they still feel it will work for them. If you're a stutterer, overt or covert, does it make your day to be such in this life and a society that's given to speech as the way we live? I don't think it does. A number of years ago at Stanford, we had a young lady who came to a group meeting that I was giving there for adult stutterers. And nobody had known that she ever had fears of being a stutterer. But when I asked about her conceptions of speech, she, she hesitated like that. She, she hesitated and had some bobbles. And then without any, any direction on my part or anybody else's part. She indicated she felt that she was a stutterer all her life and that she belonged in the group, but she was a speech pathologist. She was not a stutterer. She was viewing the, the group that I was working with. She was not a stutterer. Speech pathologists, like those among us, the normal people, have misconceptions too. They learn better as they go through school, and she was going through Stanford, she learned that she's not a secret stutterer. Secret stutterers don't bobble, per se, but, but like that. Secret stutterers are basically trying to be perfect, and you would never know that they stutter. The others, the overt, you know that they're stuttering because they can't say the words that they want to. Maybe it's a fear of speaking. Could that be it? I don't believe so. I believe it's just a misconception and a misdirection. That's what stuttering is about. Changing the direction of normal speech. Bobbling, having a good time, be, being like that in, in, instead of doing that. Could it be as simple as I say it is? I fear it is. And again I tell you, Albert Einstein said it. The solution to all of our problems are simple, only we complicate. And when we simplify, we talk with God, because God made it all simple, whatever God said may be. Could that be so far beyond us to believe that, that it's not a factor X, it's not neurological, it's not genes, it's not a difference in blood type? You're sitting in your living room, you're in your bedroom, and you say, that's too simple. You mean you just learned to bobble? Yes, I call it the bombing of America. The solution to so many of our problems, such as voice, are very simple. You either talk too high or too low, too soft or too loud, and your breathing is wrong. Those are the simple variables, per se. Stuttering, basically, is that you have a misconception of what is normal. And if you ask the stutterer what is normal in speech, the stutterer will tell you that perfect speech, flex, it has to be smooth, 
It has to be flowing, no bobbling, no hesitation. That's their concept of what is normal speech, and that's abnormal, and that's, in my opinion, why they stutter. It's been my pleasure to join with you talking about secret stuttering. If you do it, you can overcome it. If you're an overt stutter, you can overcome that, in my opinion. Thanks for joining me. I'm your host, Mort Cooper, on Change Your Voice, Change Your Life.